welcome to Grace and Lottie's Elizabeth here. About a year and a half ago, I did a video showing how I create this design, and I've had a lot of questions from that video, so I thought I would do a short series going a little more in depth on the how behind that video because they're not really that complex, but I thought that it seemed that a lot of people had questions that I was answering the same question over and over again, and it just seemed to make sense that I would start doing a video based on that. Now I'm going to be doing a couple of these, doing different shapes, and today we'll be doing a triangle and then creating that inside of it. I've got a couple of tools here that I want to show you. Number one, the compass. I've got a regular pencil, and this is just one I like. It's not necessarily an artist pencil, it's just a standard old mechanical. And then I have a number five pigment liner. Just that's the size I like with this. The eight sometimes seems a little bit fat, so I prefer the five for my general. I do really, really, really recommend getting what is what I have right here is a quilting ruler, but it's a drafting type ruler where it has a grid in it. And we'll get to that in a little bit where you can see why that grid comes in handy. Now, mine is fairly big and I would, I need to probably invest in a smaller one because it does kind of get in the way different times. But this is what I have and rather than investing in something else, I'm just using the one I have. The paper I have right now is one that I cut, so it's a little bit odd. Um, it's 12 inches, so it's a, it used to be a 9 by 12, but I cut it so that it would go through my printer, so it's actually an 8.5 by 12. Uh, it makes it easier for me to do photocopies and things with it, so just a little bit simple cut there to make this printer friendly for me. Um, it's cheap cheap, cheap drawing paper. I'm not doing this on any sort of expensive paper today. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing, this is an eight and a half sheet paper and I'm going to start by drawing a circle and my circle will decide the size of my triangle that's inside of it. So I'm going to make it four inches. That will give me a little bit on either side and I'm also going to mark my midpoints real quick. So I've got 12. So half of 12 is 6 right there. And then we'll go this way so it's not running into my stomach. And then eight and a half. So half of eight and a half would be four and a quarter. Look at that. Didn't do that on purpose, but I will take it right there. So I already had it. So from here, I'm going to inscribe, I'm going to draw a simple circle going all the way around. There we go. Simple circle. <laughs> Nothing fancy with that. I'm going to adjust my zoom here just a little bit. I'm noticing I'm not getting the whole page. So let's come out. There we go. Now you guys can see everything. Um, because I want my triangle to sit pretty square on the page, I want, I'm going to have my tip up here. So I'm going to mark, and this is the great thing with the grid, because I can see that I am totally square right here, finding that midpoint right here. And then I'm going to mark it right here. So that is my first point on my circle. Now I'm going to end up making six marks on this, but I'm only going to need three. Okay, so see I did not change my compass, so now I have these two marks. So I'm only going to have to do five. But, um, so now I go to the next mark that I made, and the next mark that I made over here. So if I look at these right here, I've got an intersection here, here, and here. I play connect the dots with that. So I'm going to go to my pigment. Just a second. Get a good line here. Oh, the top one here and here. Now, the basic rule that I was using for this is how you create six points, but I only need the three, so that's half. That's why I didn't bother doing the bottom one down here because it's not going to matter anyway. So let's go ahead and we will connect the dots there. Connect the dots again. Hold my pencil up or my pen up straight. 
and then one more. I went a little bit too far, but I can always come back and clean up. So I'm not actually going to color on this sheet itself. I'm going to use this for a template. So first one done. That was pretty easy. We've created that nice um, equilateral triangle right there where the sides are equal and so are the angles. And so that's where we're going to start from. Now pick any point you want to start from. It doesn't matter. I'm going to pick from the top. So I'm going to line this up here. Now what I'm going to do is using my outer point what I'm doing is going here and then I'm coming in from this point right here I'm going in a quarter inch so I've got a quarter inch mark in so I'm starting from the top finding that point and I'm following this line down to a quarter inch and I'm gonna repeat that same process around and around and around until I get way too dizzy so starting from now, this new point that I just created, and again, going a quarter inch in, right here, that marks a quarter inch. This is why the grid is awesome on this. Reconnect the dots around, and again. Now instead of going all the way to that outer edge like I did before, I stopped right here on that one. And this is where I'm going to start creating my shape. Again, doing, just doing that quarter inch. Now I have to fidget. I want to slide just a hair too far. And see, it's not where, and I can move it up here and you can see it right there make the point line up. So again, starting from the last point and coming in quarter inch. This is a nice big triangle, so we get a good sweep on it. Sweep it up a little bit because I don't stab myself here with the ruler. Find that quarter inch mark right here. Line up with the dot. Got it. I'm going to speed it up from here as I go in and then we'll talk about the next step.
but here is the basic design and I have a line that I messed up right here what I mismeasured I'm gonna fix that at the very end and there's a reason why because I normally come back in and fix it with a white gel pen and when I run photocopies of this you can't see it so it works out well for me now if this was something I was actually going to be working on on the sheet I would have just started over at that point um, this isn't so hard that it's disastrous just to start over and make a new one um, if you wanted to you could go through at this point and erase your circle marks right here I'm kind of fine with them um, again the way I'm working with this one it's not a big deal so the next step that I like to do I'm going to swap pens now and go to a three for just a little bit. Uh, I find that it works better if I work with a smaller pen than what I drew the baselines in for the next part. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come and I'm gonna make these guys rounded. Just like that. Simple round edges. that it hides your start and stop lines a little bit better if you use a smaller pen than if you use the same size for this. So it looks neater in the finished product. It's coming around. Now rather than trying to draw these from a different angle because I'm right-handed, I tend to work best from one side, I'm simply going to rotate my paper now and do them this way. So it's basically repeating the same process that I just did. And I'll speed this up a little bit so you guys... That has all of those little feather bits drawn now. Honestly, I switched to my eight now because it's filling in quite a bit of backgrounds. I'm still working on getting down the Pentel pen brush, uh, and it's great for filling in, but I didn't want to mess up what I'd been working on by using that today. So, since I'm still getting used to it, now I'm just gonna fill in all this background. And this is when you'll start noticing that, oh, now it's making a lot more sense visually. It's kind of, up to this point, a little confusing to look at, but this gives it some dimension that helps the eye make sense about what's going on. I done. Sorry for going off camera there up at the top.
here is the basic triangle. Now I'm gonna show you guys cleaning that up. I'm just gonna get a white gel pen now. Basically just using my, like you would white out something. I'm just gonna take this, go right over it. And when I run a copy of this, like I can run this onto any art paper I want. Like say I wanted to put it onto some watercolor, I can do that. Or do it on some gray paper, I can do that. Just have a, a lot of flexibility. There you go, now you saw that easy fix. Got has it nice and clean. I'll probably go back over it one more time once it dries, but you get the idea. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and hopefully this answered a couple of questions. In the next video, we will visit the square excitement and doing this on a four-sided. I have some ideas for different ideas versus the loops here as well. So we'll be visiting different ideas on how to create the interest as you're going in. So new ideas on that. So if you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe as well as you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Grace and Lotties. Remember that art happens in everyday life. Make sure you're watching for it. Bye.